Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. Amen. Welcome to the Garden of Peace Worship Center. On behalf of Sister Shaw, Angela Shaw, and myself, we welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. Of course, this is our virtual service online only, but amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Once a month so far, once a month so far, we meet at Peony Place, amen, and we have our in service, amen, where we are there together. And that will be on May, amen, the 7th, May the 7th, I believe it is. We will be there, amen. And uh, we're asking you to come and be with us. Come and enjoy the Lord with us. We're going to get together, and then we're going to come back again, and I believe it's June the 4th, and that is Pentecost Sunday. We're going to fast, amen. We're going to pray, amen. We're going to, for that week, and then we're going to uh, have our big climax on Pentecost Sunday, May the 4th, I mean, June the 4th. We will come back, and we will have communion. Amen, amen, amen. And that would be a peony place, amen, at 1000 West Foothill Boulevard in the city of Claremont, Sweet C. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want to inquire, you can direct message us, amen, here on Facebook or Instagram at our Garden of Peace Worship Center, Instagram, our Garden of Peace Worship Center, uh, Twitter, our Garden of Peace Worship Center Facebook, any of those you can inquire or Mario Shaw, which I have an Instagram and a Facebook. You can inquire there. But I just, I want to glorify his name. I want to glorify his name. I want to glorify. The name of the Lord, I want to glow. Refine his name, help me to glow. Refine his name, help me to glow. Refine his name, help me to glow. the name of the Lord, help me to glow. Refine his name, I come to glow. Refine his name, I come to glorify his name. I come to glorify the name of the Lord. I come to glorify his name. Let me help me to glorify his name. Come on, help me to glorify his name. Help me to glorify the name of the Lord. Help me to glorify his name. I come to glorify his name. I come to glorify his name. I come to glorify. The name of the Lord, I come to glorify his name. Mm. I know it was the blood. I'm so thankful. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, come on, he died upon a cross. I know it was the blood for me. Glory. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. You know that an angel bowed before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, help me. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. You know that the angel bowed before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Just gonna say this once. 
Jesus is the God we serve. Come on. Jesus is the God we serve. You know that angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Jesus is the God we serve. Oh, bless, 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 bless the Lord of glory. The God of heaven, please bless his name. Bless his wonderful, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. <laughs> There's power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Come on. No other name I know. Come on. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Once again, I say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank God for you, you, and even, yes, you. God is good all the time. We thank him. Amen. We thank God uh, just for him and all the great, great testimonies from wherever. Just hearing testimonies from the north, the east, the south, the west, of people being saved people being baptized in Jesus' name, people being filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, amen. And that, I mean, you don't have to label it apostolic, Pentecostal, doesn't matter as long as it's happening. As long as people are being born from above, that's all we care. That's all we care is that people are being born from above. And we glorify God for it. Amen. We're so thankful once again, as we say, amen. Thankful for being here on this beautiful, glorious Sunday morning. Amen. Nothing like the first day of the week, amen, to come aside and worship our God and give him glory and give him honor and magnify his great name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for each and every one of you. And I'm going to ask you, if you would, I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to ask you to turn to 1 Peter 5 and 10. 1 Peter 5 and 10. Father, we thank you for such a beautiful day. We thank you for your kindness, your mercy, your love. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you, for Lord. Lord, there's people on our prayer list that have been on it. Some we have added this week even, Lord. You know each and every ailment, each and every disease, each and every, you know, those that have been stricken with cancer, prostate cancer, Lord, breast cancer, Lord. Uh, pancreatic cancer, any liver cancer, any kind of lung cancer, any kind of cancer that there is, and we rebuke in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, there's other things, lupus. Lord, there's other things, uh, Lord, muscular dystrophy. And Lord, we just pray right now for your healing virtues to flow. Flow, Lord God, from Calvary. You said by your stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. 
And God, we ask that you save, Lord. Save, Lord. Save, Lord. Save men and women. As much as the evilness that is going on in our world and all of the excess of evil that we hear, yet you save. Lord, you said your hand is not short that you cannot save. Hallelujah. And we're calling on that great arm of salvation for you to save men and women. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. We thank God. And once again, for you. As we said, we're going to ask you to turn to the book of First Peter. Amen. First Peter. Five. And one. First Peter five and one. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about. Uh, you know, because I, I feel lifting of my spirit, you know, I think about the old song that at Bethany we used to sing for our broadcast every Sunday. And it's, there shall be light in the evening time, the path to glory you will surely find. This is the waterway, this is the light today. Baptized in Jesus' name, young and old, repent of all your sins, and the Holy Ghost shall enter in. What do you say? The evening time has come. It's a fact that God and Christ are one. Come on, one more time. There shall be light. In the evening time, this of course is just the course, the path to glory you will surely find. This is the waterway, this is the light today, baptize in Jesus' name, young and old, repent of all your sins, and the Holy Ghost shall enter in. The evening time has come. It's a fact God and Christ are one. (laughs) Amen, amen, amen. All right, here's what he says. And I'm going to start a little, little, I'm I'm going to start here. You know, I was going to, I'm going to actually start at the beginning because I was going to just start with 510, but I I see that I can't (laughs) because the context and, you you know, we want to understand the context of what's being said. He says, therefore, I exhort you elders among you as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not for sordid again or sordid gain, but with eagerness, nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but proving to be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will be you will receive the unfading crown of glory. You younger men, likewise, be subject to your elders, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. Casting all your anxiety, or as King James says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. But he says here, and we're using the NASP, amen. He says, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be of sober spirit, 
be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. And after you have suffered a while, this is verse 10, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. And I do want to, at this time, go to the King James Version with verse 10. It says, but the God of all grace, who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen, and settle you. Uh, and one more. <clears throat> Amplified says, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. Amen. 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 I could go with some more just to hopefully give you an understanding how we go from suffering to glory, suffering to glory. Hallelujah. After you have suffered a while. Amen. Amen. After you have suffered a while. Uh, uh, what you're going through right now is not forever. What you're dealing with right now is not forever. Uh, it is going to end. Hallelujah. I, I like it here because Peter, amen, a, a great apostle and, and the, the one that Jesus called, amen, Petros, the rock, amen, the rock. He was Simon, amen, at the time, and he was the son, hallelujah. Simon, I mean, you know, not the son, but uh, he was Simon when Jesus called him. And because of his impetuosity and because of what Jesus saw in him, Jesus said, your name is Simon, but you will be called Petros, you know, which is the rock. In other words, you are going to be one of the pillars that I build this new, amen, this covenant with the people. You're going to be one of the pillars. You're going to be one of the chief apostles of this new era, this new amen covenant with all people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he set in order Peter. Amen. So now Peter, who is writing here, amen, even tells you about his situation and how he saw the glory of God and everything. And Peter writing, amen. Remember, Peter, remember he is writing from, you know, when you think about Peter and you think about how he was, I mean, he was a man that, that uh, uh, um, denied Christ three times. He is a man who vehemently told Christ that he would not, you know, though all men deny you, I will not. But he's also the same Peter that Jesus said to. He said, listen, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. He said, but I prayed for you. And we know, we know that if God himself prayed for you, hallelujah, you know it's going to be all right. Uh, so Jesus said, but I prayed for you. Hallelujah. So now as the ending of this particular letter that he is writing to the scattered among the 12 tribes is being written, he now comes down, amen, because at 
this time, we are told that there is heavy persecution of the church. And when there is heavy persecution, people have a tendency to get discouraged. People have a tendency, even, hallelujah, uh, great ones, even mighty ones, amen, get discouraged. I know you thought you were the only one and, you know, your pastor never gets discouraged or, or your elder, your apostle, your, you know, whoever is your leader. I know you thought they never had to, well, they've never had to deal with discouragement. But what Peter is saying here is that, Amen. When trials come and tribulation come, we all deal with discouragement. We all deal with a man not knowing where we're going, not having, as they say, the vision of where we are going. But yet now he is writing, amen, to encourage not only as a person who is writing just to write, but as a partaker. Listen to what he says here, amen, at the very beginning. He says, therefore, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. In other words, he was a partaker of looking at Christ's sufferings. Amen. He was a partaker of knowing how he was nailed to the cross and what he endured those six hours on Golgotha's hill. But also he now knows about that third day when Jesus got up. Hallelujah. And his famous words, I can tell you that the famous words that were put into the soul of Peter were and Peter. Because he told him, he said, I want you to go tell my disciples and Peter to meet me in Galilee. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meet me in Galilee. And so by hearing that word, he was a fellow participant in the sufferings of Christ. He was a fellow participant. Amen. And now the glory, hallelujah. He was able to see Jesus walk through walls. He was able to see Jesus eat, amen, and yet have a glorified body. He was able to see the nails in his hand, hallelujah, and know that he was the Christ. He was dead, but now he is alive forevermore. And because of these things, he now is able to write to these people who are going through, hallelujah, and he says to them, hallelujah, he says, amen, in verse number 10, he says, after you have suffered for a little while. See, what they wanted you to understand, it says for a while, but they wanted you to understand that in the Greek word there, it means for a little while. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, but the God of all King James, comes about, but the God of all grace who has called you unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus that you have suffered a while, but the word there, amen, the Greek word is meaning a little while. In other words, he's sharing with us, just like Paul did, when Paul said that our light afflictions, amen, will not be compared to our weight in glory. He's saying, amen, that after you have suffered with him, you shall reign with him. Hallelujah. He's trying to let them know that what you are dealing with, what you are going through is but a light 
nothing compared to what is going to happen in your life. Amen. Whether you go through it, hallelujah, and come out on the other side preaching the gospel or come out on the other side lifting up the name of Jesus or you have to die for the name of Jesus, then you will have the ultimate. The ultimate is to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. And you will understand that what you went through was nothing compared to the glory that shall be revealed in you. Hallelujah. And that's what thou, the apostle now, is trying to illustrate, trying to tell us. Hallelujah. He's trying to let us know, hallelujah, that he, amen, is a fellow laborer. He says, I am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. Hallelujah. And also a partaker. See, what he wants them to understand is that I want you to know, yes, he suffered. Yes, he went through. Yes, it was horrible in some instances. He wanted them to understand that it was a terrible thing and he's not making light of what they are going through because they are enduring hardness as good soldiers. Some of them are being crucified. Some of them are being fed to lions. Some of them, amen, are being amen, killed stoned in the streets so he's not making light of what they are dealing with but what he is saying is I want you to understand that no matter how much suffering you go through it is but a light moment compared to a man the weight of glory it is but a light thing hallelujah I want you to understand it is light, amen, compared to what God is going to do in your life, or if you, amen, are taken out of this life, God, amen, is going to bless you exceedingly, hallelujah, let's go down, he says, feed the flock. He goes on to tell them, he says, listen, he says, I want you to understand that what you're dealing with, amen, you got to keep on, keep on, keep on. See, I made the statement earlier where I said, you don't think you're an apostle or you're a preacher or you're a minister or you're a, a pastor or you're a district elder, amen, or you're a bishop, hallelujah. You don't think they go through things and they get discourage him, but he's telling amen the leadership He's telling them to be encouraged. He says, listen, you got to still feed the flock. He says, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not of constraint, but willingly, not for money, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And then he goes into talking to the young folk to be subject to the elders. Oh, that's something that we don't do today. People, everybody, I know what I'm talking about. Remember, amen, if you watched, amen, the finals, I mean, well, not the finals, but the playoffs. Uh, that one young man, amen, said to about LeBron, he's old. Uh, I don't respect anybody till they give me 40. Uh, hallelujah. And the Lakers beat him by 40. So I guess they gave him 40. But it was a lack of respect. I know it's just a game, but sometimes those games trickle into a man life and we not respective of our elders. We have to be respective and as 
especially in the church of God. Respect your elders. He said, submit yourselves. Look here. Hallelujah. He says here, he says, in the same way you are younger, must accept the authority of the elders and, and all uh, of you must clothe yourselves in humility with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Uh, hallelujah. So now I'm going to move on because I got to get through this. Hallelujah. But I'm feeling good in my spirit now because I want you to know your suffering is not in vain. I want you to understand what you have been dealing with, what you have been going through. Hallelujah is not in vain. Pastors, what you're dealing with. Amen. Out there trying to get a building, trying to raise money, trying to do different things. Amen. So the ministry can be solidified. Trying, amen, all you can. Trying to hear the voice of God. Trying, amen, to get the people to rally behind you. Hallelujah. I want you to understand it's not in vain, after you've gone through, after you've suffered a while, after a man, it looks like it's not going to work out. I want you to understand he'll establish you. Ooh, bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hallelujah. Ah, listen to here. He says here. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. But I want you to understand. So now Peter is a man who is a man, a person who can write this. Amen. It's not just coming from just a person that has something to write, huh? but he can write it because of experience. Huh? He has the authority from God to write it as being one of the chief apostles. Huh? But now he writes huh? because he has been a partaker. He has been a man, someone who has seen the sufferings of Christ. He has been someone who has seen the glory of Christ. So he says the purpose of grace, because God is the God of all greats. He said it's first and foremost is to help us live a new and enriched life one that aims to glorify our God, that is full of faith, hope, love, mercy, unfailing love, limitless forgiveness, mercy and grace, faith, hope, and love. These are beautiful words are delicately woven throughout scripture. Faith being the assurance of things hoped for and the belief in what is unseen. According to Hebrews 11 and 1, hope allows us to be filled with joy and peace due to our trust in God. Love brings forth a nature of patience and kindness. Hallelujah. The words offer us us a glimpse into the nature of our God as well as an assurance of how God sees us as his beloved children. Faith is what brings us into relationship with God. Hope gives us the promise of eternal life spent with God. And love is what is freely given by God time and time again. Love being considered the greatest of these, partly because it goes beyond ourselves and can be extended to others. God's unconditional love opens our hearts to welcome faith, receive hope, and give love. God is a God of faith, hope, and love. 
<laughs> but when we look at the word grace, grace, it is a word that may bring forth a wide variety of emotions. But however, while grace isn't clearly defined in the word of God, we hear the whimsical word being tossed around quite a bit in our congregations and fellowship circles. Maybe you've heard that grace is an undeserved gift of God's way of showing favor toward the unworthy. Well, let's take a deeper look at what grace means and why God is referred to as the God of all grace. Because what I'm trying to say to you is we're going from suffering to glory because God is the God of all grace. That's what the writer of Gabriel man, the translator of King James says, but the God of all grace, hallelujah, is some grace by the standard of definition, means an act of goodwill or kindness, in fact, that probably isn't too far off base when it comes to how God's grace is given to you and I. After all, God is gracious and kind. He's a good God that gives us a magnitude of blessing that we don't deserve, and his actions and character exude love, even his discipline measure. When we flip through his word, we see his mighty hand in every detail. God's grace is wrapped in those stories along with his faithfulness, hope, and love. We are also met with God's mercy. Mercy seems too often to go hand in hand with grace. That's because mercy prompts the outpour of God's grace. In other words, mercy is how God sees us as his beloved children, children that will make mistakes and fail, need love guidance with the tender type of compassion and gentleness. Grace is a gift that covers us in God's special kind of love. The best part is God extends it to all people. For the word of God says in Titus 2.11, he says, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. This is referring to common grace. Common grace is universal grace that every person can experience because our God is so faithful, good, kind, and unconditionally loving. We encounter common grace every day that often goes unnoticed as God provides our needs. Examples may include the beauty of the sunset, time spent with a friend, a refreshing drink, a generous smile, from a stranger, and so on. But what, hallelujah, now we talk about because he's the God of all grace. That was common grace, which is to all people. Now we're going to deal with saving grace. He says, when we take the leap of faith and become a man, a believer, called believer, we experience not just common grace, but we are offered God's precious saving grace, for it is by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, lest any man should boast. This is written, hallelujah, that we may understand that this is saving grace. Hallelujah. It says God is always pursuing us to come back to him when we wander too far off 
because we are invaluable to him. Hallelujah. When we place our trust in God and profess our faith in him, we are saved. Oh, we know, of course, after we placed our trust and repented of our sins, amen, and have been baptized in his name and have, amen, received the power of God, the Holy Ghost. He's the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ. After you suffered a while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Now we dealt with common grace. Now we're dealing with saving grace. And now that you have the unmerited favor of God, you stepped in the arena where you are now part of the beloved. You're part of the kingdom. You are king's kid now. I want you to understand you will suffer some things. You will. I heard the apostle Paul say in Timothy, he said, yea, all that will live godly shall suffer persecution. That was something that was dealt with then. And now it's still prevalent today. See, what many people don't understand is when you take that amen scripture in its context, it deals with exactly what was going on at that time to even say you were a Christian. You would be persecuted. You would be stoned. You would be left for dead. You would be a man ridiculed. See, today is a little different, but we still go through things. We still have people acting crazy when you hear that you're a saved person. When they hear you don't run the streets with them no more. When they hear you don't do all the foolishness anymore. Hey Amen. You have people out there that will persecute you. So yes, it still applies today. He said, God is a God of all grace as he pours both common and saving grace. But the hope lies within that saving grace. God tells us that in this world, we will have trials and suffer and may even be persecuted for professing our faith in Christ. But God will restore us one day. The promise Peter offers us in this verse is that we will be made new strong, firm, and steadfast. We will no longer be mentally, physically, or emotionally weak. When we meet by Jesus in our eternal home, we will acquire a new body and have a full eternal life with him. Hallelujah. This makes you want to rejoice. Just so thankful that our God loves us so deep. Hallelujah. But that's in the afterlife. But he's also talking about in this life. Remember Jesus made the statement to the apostles and they said Jesus was talking about, he says, uh, they said, well, Lord, we have left all after Jesus said, talked about that, you know, if you follow him, you'll be blessed. And the apostles came to him and the disciples came and said, Lord, we have left all. He said, you're going to be blessed in this life and in the life to come. So what I want you to understand, my brother and my sister, is that you'll be blessed in this life and the one to come is not over. It's not just about eternal salvation. As far as in glory, it's not just about that. But look at what he said. He said, you'll be emotionally. You'll be hallelujah. He talked about you will be 
physically. You'll be mentally strong, physically strong, emotionally strong. After you've suffered a while, it'll strengthen your mind. You can have a mind. You can have a mind where you are on fire. For the Lord, you know that after you've suffered, after you went through, after you've been through some stuff, after you've seen the hand of God, after you've seen God move, after you've seen the grace that he gives you, that even in the midst of your suffering, you're talking to God. You say, Lord, I love you. And the Lord said, I love you too. You're going to endure some hardness as a good soldier, but be a good chick. I'm with you. That's the promise that we love. I'm with you. That's what we know that is the truth. And once I hear that, I know that God's got me. Whatever I have to go through, yes, I might have tears. Yes, I might be crying. Yes, I might, amen, slip and be depressed sometime. But I remember that the God of all grace, hallelujah, he has called me to his eternal glory in Christ. And after I've suffered a while, after I've suffered a while, after I went through the fire, after I have been through some stuff, after that, he says, he will restore me and make me strong, make me firm and make me steadfast. I can stand on the rock there and let people know God is a God of all grace. After you suffer from suffering the glory, after you went through, after you've been through some stuff, God Almighty will take you higher, higher, Yes, he will. He'll take you higher. You'll stand up on the rock. I heard him say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Honey, you're coming out. Man, you're coming out. Sister, you're coming out. Brother, you're coming out. Hold on. Hold on, you're coming out. You're gonna come out from it. You're gonna make your way out. He's gonna establish you. He's gonna settle you. He's gonna make you steadfast. After he's a man, let you endure a little. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that after you went through some stuff, after you've gone through the fire, after you've gone through the flood, after you've gone through, hallelujah, and you're coming out, you're coming out, you're coming out. Bless the name of God. You're coming out because he's a God of unmerited favor. He's a God, a man of grace. He's the God of all grace. He's the God of all love. He's the God of all faith. He is love. He gives us faith. Hallelujah and hope. I heard the psalmist in Amen. 42nd Psalm. Well, he said, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the health of my countenance. Oh, 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 that my eyes were a fountain of tears, said Jeremiah. I'd cry and cry and cry. What would you cry, Jeremiah? He said, For the slain of the dog daughters of Jerusalem, for the daughters of Zion, but all of a sudden he heard a word from God. Yes, we called him the weeping prophet. Yes, we called him the one, amen, that no one would hear. But then all of a sudden I heard him in Lamentations. Chapter number three say, it is of the Lord 
his mercies, then we are not consumed. His compassion is new every morning, and great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. I've been through some stuff. I was down in the inner jail, down in the inner prison, where they put the violent ones, where they put the ones that they feel, that they have to put them all the way back in there so that they don't escape because they didn't want them to escape to this world, to come back into this society because they were so bad. They had Jeremiah in there going through. And Jeremiah chapter 20, I tell you, he said, I was in stocks. I was back in the inner prison. And I told the Lord, you have deceived me. I didn't know this is what it was about. You told me I'd be a prophet to the nations. You told me, hallelujah, I, I would root up, I would pull down, and I would set up and I would root. But yet here I am in prison back in this place where they throw the food at you. Hallelujah. In here with the worst of the worst. He said, I told God you deceived me. He said, and I said, I will not speak your name again. But he said his word was like fire. Shut up in my bones. I heard the word of encouragement coming. I heard the word of strength coming. That I am the God of all grace. Yes, I am. And Jeremiah, after you have suffered a while, after you've gone through a while, after you've endured some hardness, after you, hallelujah, have gone through the Fire. I'll establish you. I'll settle you. I will make you steadfast mentally, emotionally. Hallelujah. I'll make you where you can stand like you never stood before and proclaim my name. Hallelujah. Yes, he went through the fire. Yes, he got down. Yes, he wanted to quit. But I want you to understand, you shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk ye in it hallelujah this is the way walk ye in it after <laughs> you suffer see because the purpose of grace <laughs> first and foremost is to help us live a new and enriched life, one that aims to glorify our God. It's full of faith, hope, and love, mercy and unfailing love. <laughs> ah, glory, 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 glory. As I close, we receive grace that we may give out grace. He freely forgives us, so we are to freely forgive others. You want a scripture for that, Matthew 6, 14 through 16. Well, this may be easier said than done. Continue to hand your heart over to the Lord and seek help in his ways, and you can gain peace and forgive others. Extend acceptance. First Peter 3 and 8. We are commanded to love and see others the way God does. By accepting others with grace through our actions and words, we show the world what loving like Jesus looks like. <laughs> Number three, show care and compassion. Ephesians 4.32. When we are compassionate, we demonstrate God's love for us and share kindness with others. Number four, share support. 
Galatians 6 and 2, we are called to carry one another's burdens. This gift of grace can be so helpful to those that are hurting or walking through trials alone. Hallelujah. Mm. And last but not least, number five, graciously give. Have an open heart willing to share and bless others with the gift of your generosity. We can extend grace through our talent, our time, and financial support to those that are in need. He's the God of all grace. And that's why suffering comes to glory. Hallelujah. Suffering comes to glory. Hallelujah. That's why we bless God and magnify his great name because suffering is not suffering by itself. You can look over holy writ, old and new, and we can see how God has brought people through their suffering to his glory. Some went on to glory, but many stayed here and were raised up on high after they suffered. I just want to read the scripture again. But the God of all grace, all grace, who have called us into his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's why you're going through what you're going through. He wanted to settle you, establish. <laughs> it's not over. You're going to. In Jesus' name. Once again, my brothers and sisters, thank God again for this beautiful Sunday morning. We love you on behalf of Sister Shaw and myself. Amen. We will say one more time. <clears throat> this is our online service only, but on next week, we will be on May. The seven will be at Peony Place, 1000 West, Foothill Boulevard, in the city of Claremont. And that is Sweet C. Come be, be, come be with us in our in home, in home, <clears throat> in our in service, where we'll be together. Amen. And we'll be praising God together. Hallelujah. Come be with us. May God richly bless you as our prayer. We love you and we thank God for each and every with you, every, every one of you. I will say this, pray for us. God wants to take us higher, but there are many adversaries. There are many adversaries, but we can make it through prayer. May God richly bless you. God bless you.